welcome everybody to our second annual artist card webinar. Today we're going to go over printing from Lightroom and Photoshop. And also we have templates on the website for both Lightroom and Photoshop. So if you're looking to do the cards and you haven't downloaded those yet, and you want to kind of follow along as we go through this, download those templates and that I'll put that in the chat as well. That's Moab paper.com slash templates. And we have Lightroom templates and instructions that work both on Mac and PC. So you can start there. And we'll first do a PowerPoint overview and then get into the live demo. And as Paige said, go ahead and ask any questions you have as we go through this. And hopefully we'll get you all printing beautiful cards for the holidays. So the Moab Artist Cards come in uh, basically four sizes. Three of them are labeled as artist cards. Those are the small, the large, and the square. And then we also have the entrotelopes, which have been around for a long time. Many of you are probably familiar with those. And those are a seven by 10. And the difference mainly between the number nine large and the entrotelopes is that some newer printers now let you print a borderless card on a seven by 10 template. So if you have a Canon Pro 200 or a Pro 300 and you have the entrotelopes, that printer now lets you print borderless straight out of the print driver. It unfortunately won't do that on the number nine artist cards because they're not exactly those correct dimensions. Any borderless printing is limited by the print driver and the printer itself. So it either lets you do it or it doesn't let you do it. There's generally no uh, finessing that you can do to get it to work. The only exception to that is on some Epson printers, you can get them to go borderless. And we'll talk about that later in the program. We also include envelopes with all of our cards. As I mentioned, uh, we have Photoshop and Lightroom templates and instructions for all the card sizes. And we're gonna work on those today through the demo. PDF instructions are posted with those for some of the templates, the instructions are included in the zip file. And then for the Lightroom templates, I believe it is the installation instructions are on the website. And then the step-by-step um, -step printing instructions are included in the zip file. And again, those are moabpaper.com slash templates. So if you're just getting started with printing cards, I know it can be kind of daunting and intimidating because not only is it a funny size, but you're trying to do it borderless and, and line up your margins and everything else like that. So my advice is if you have some double-sided matte paper in your, in your office, in your studio, cut that down to the same size as the cards and use that as your test blank because it's going to be a lot less expensive per sheet than the, than the scored cards. And that makes it a lot easier to uh, learn the process, make a mistake, whatever else, because you're using just inexpensive photo paper. So cut down your photo paper for testing. And the other nice thing about a double-sided mat is you can print both sides just like on the cards. And you can also make little notes on the paper prior to printing. You can put an arrow so you know how you loaded it in your printer. You know, use this as a tool so that you become really confident with the process and then save it because probably through next summer, you're not going to be printing a lot of cards, but then in the fall, you might come back. And, and if you save the, the templates and the tests that you did, you can refer to those to kind of refresh your memory on, on how the card printing works. Um, the other thing that I recommend is for the card sizes that you have, go ahead and, and print the template for reference so you can see how that fits onto the card blank. And then of course, once you're comfortable with everything, load your cards and away you go. So the first part to printing this is making a custom paper size because your printer will not ship for instance, with the small card size of um, nine by five and 13 sixteenths, you'll have to make that. So we'll go over that. Two things to keep in mind. Number one, in the custom paper size, the width measurement is always the shorter measurement because you always load your cards into the printer, just like a sheet of paper, short edge first. And so you want to tell the driver that this is the width, always the shorter dimension. And the other thing you want to do is you want to set your margins on your custom sheet size at zero because Photoshop and Lightroom don't measure from the edge of the paper when it comes to centering your image. 
it measures from the inside of the margins. So a lot of printers will have slightly asymmetrical margins with a little larger margin on that leading edge. And that will cause your image to be off center, no matter what sort of uh, trickery you try to do in the, in the image setup. So the width is always the shorter measurement and set your margins at zero. And now let's get started in. And Photoshop. Evan, before you do, um, yeah. so someone is asking if you can do this on the Canon 100 Pro. The Pro 100, yes. Uh, it doesn't have borderless in the driver, but you can you can print these cards on any inkjet printer out there that I've used. Um, just once you make the custom paper size, you're all set to go. And then which paper is the are the cards available in? So the cards are made from the Intrada stock, and we actually have the regular artist cards and the heavy artist cards. So effectively, the regular artist cards are uh, Intrada 190, and the heavy artist cards are Intrada 300. I know people will ask about a if we have a glossy card. Unfortunately, those glossy papers don't score and fold very well at all. They tend to fall apart. So at this point, we only have cards in a matte finish. And we're getting a few questions about other printers that work. Um, the Epson 800 and the Pro 10. Do all printers work? Yes, I haven't had any issues over the years. We've used the the 100, the 10 uh, for Epson, the 400, 600, 800. I have a 700 here on the desk. We've used the Pro 1000. Really, the only printers that don't work are wide format roll printers. And then the Epson 4900, 5000, the big 17 inch desktop commercial printers uh, will only work with the largest cards because they have a minimum sheet size of eight by 10. But every desktop printer out there that I've used, including a, a small office all in one, all those should be compatible with the cards. And it may, you know, it may take a little more learning in the print driver, but like I said, once you set that custom paper size, you shouldn't have any problems with it. All right, so I have loaded here, I've opened the Square Artist Card template. And this is how our templates open in Photoshop. So over here in the layers palette, they have two layers. One is the outside instructions, and then one is the inside instructions. And these guide you on which is the, the inside and the outside, the top and the bottom, what the margins are, all that, that sort of thing. So what you'll do is once you've taken the information that you need, you can turn off the outside instructions, paste your image in, adjust it as, as needed, and then move on from there. So the first thing that we're going to do that I've already done is I printed the template. And on my P700 here, that fortunately has even margins all the way around. So the advantage of printing this template is if you print it and you see that the the leading edge maybe has a little asymmetrical margin, you can go ahead and measure that. And then you know that, oh, my printer needs, for instance, a third of an inch, and then make that margin consistent all the way around so that your image is always centered. And the way to do that here in Photoshop is, here we go, is to go view, new guide layout. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna check the box here for margin and let's say your printer needs a third of an inch margin, you can just put 0.3 in to all of these dimensions. And you'll see in the preview behind me, it's made another set of guides farther in on the template. So if I click OK on that, it will save those guides so that if your printer is different, you can customize this template to the machine that you're using. I'm going to cancel out of that for now. So the first thing I need to do is drop in a photo. And this tells me that my maximum image size here is five by five. And as we note in the instructions, these templates are at 300 pixels an inch. So you'll go to the photo you wanna use on the card, go to the crop tool, and from the little pull down menu up here, you wanna select width times height times resolution. So for us, that was five by five by 300 pixels an inch. And then I can tighten up that crop to where I want it. Press return and again. So now I have cropped my source image to five by five at 300 pixels an inch. 
So if I just select all and then copy and go back to my template, go to the move tool so the crop disappears and then go edit paste. So there's my image. And because we matched the template resolution, it came in at the correct size. I'm gonna drag that down to the bottom guideline. So it fits in there just as it should. And then I wanna put a little uh, attribution on the back. Now, as this notes here, anything on the back panel needs to be upside down. So the easiest way to do that, and I'm gonna turn off the instructions now, is go to the text tool, drag a text box as wide as the margins so you know that it's centered. We'll zoom in so you can see that. And I'm gonna add my, and of course back here, you could put a website or your logo or anything else like that. I wanna center it. And then I need to rotate it, which is edit transform, rotate 180 degrees. So that puts it upside down. And again, because I dragged the text box between the two margins, I know that it's centered. So we look at the whole card, I have my image on the front, I have my little note on the back, and that's all ready to go. And again, I made sure to turn off the outside instructions so I don't have the risk of any of those printing. So now I'm ready to print it. When you go to print, we have an artist card color profile available on the website. So that I have downloaded and installed. So today I'm using the Epson P700. Photoshop manages colors. I'm looking for the Moab Artist Card P700. And then I, we have initials at the end of every color profile. So all the media settings are listed on our website where you download your profiles. But also once you have that profile installed, you can look at this and say, oh, it's the artist card. And the media setting is UPPM, Ultra Premium Presentation Paper Mat. So I select my profile, again, the rendering intent, and now I go to print settings. So if this is your first time printing cards, you're going to need to make a custom media size. And you do that from the paper size pull down, go to the bottom where it says manage custom sizes. And then I already have one saved in here, but what you would do is again, the width is the shorter dimension. So 5.8, the height is nine inches. And then as I discussed earlier, you wanna leave the margins at zero. So you have control over centering the image. And then you give it a name. In this case, I called it artist card small and click okay. And then second, we need to go to printer settings and make sure that ultra premium presentation paper mat, which matches that um, media setting listed on the profile is selected and then just click save. And I already got a little confused because I'm using the square cards, not the small cards. So we're gonna go back to print settings. We're gonna go artist card square. Again, another custom size that I created and saved and save that and now there it is correctly. So we see in the preview that it's all lined up. Everything's good to go. I have my paper loaded in the printer here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit print and we'll see how that comes out. And someone is asking about the relative color metric. Yeah, so that um, relative color metric versus perceptual are, are the two rendering intents that you can use. And either one works. Perceptual does more lifting, heavy lifting for um, an image that's the majority out of gamut. So generally I use relative color metric because it's the most screen accurate. And we can look at that again here. Oh, and this is another thing you might encounter. The printer just said it's out of roll paper. Well, obviously we're not trying to use roll paper. So I'm gonna cancel that print job and I will go back here and show you where we went wrong. So generally, when you go to print settings and you choose a paper size, 
we go up into the standard sizes, for instance, letter, you can choose US letter, sheet, roll paper, front, thick, all those other options. Now, when you're choosing a custom paper size, it doesn't have all those built-in options right here. They're actually down on the printer settings screen. So what I missed was it's gonna default to roll paper. So all I have to do is select sheet and then make sure it says ultra premium matte, save. And then regarding the rendering intent question that we just had, here in the Photoshop print window, I can turn the gamut warning on or off. Now this source image is in sRGB, so it will be 100% in gamut when I go to print it. So with a relative color metric, you won't see any odd color transitions because there's nothing out of gamut to adjust. Just make sure you check the box for black point compensation. If the gamut warning lights up with a lot of out of gamut colors, you might get a better print using perceptual because perceptual will move all the colors in the same relationship and you won't end up with any harsh transitions between in gamut and out of gamut colors. So we'll go ahead and print this again and see how we do. And Andrew is asking if the paper is double-sided. Yes, all the cards are double-sided. And will you talk about how to add a greeting inside the card? Yes, so once this prints, we're gonna go ahead and print the inside of the card as well. All right, so now that my card front is printing, I'm gonna go turn off the front image and the back. I'm gonna turn on the inside instructions. So the inside instructions, we have the top and the bottom labeled. Again, the margins are still here. So I wanna go ahead and add some text. So I have the text tool selected. And again, I'm gonna drag all the way across. And we can add our text for the inside. Again, I've pulled that text box from side to side, so it's centered. We can make that a little bigger. And because this is Photoshop, you have almost infinite um, text options. We have lots of fonts. You can do multiple um, text boxes or multiple lines of text really anything, anything that you can think of. So anytime you click back on the move tool in Photoshop, it will cement that text layer that you made. So we have happy new year at the bottom there. And then if I turn off the inside instructions, you can see that that is just in the lower panel, which will be kind of the back as you open the card. So our card printed out. Do you recommend waiting for the ink to dry to print on the other side? Yeah, you know, if you're if you're not in a hurry, actually, what I do recommend doing is printing the inside first, so that your image print doesn't get pulled through the printer twice. So once you kind of get rolling on this and get comfortable, I would say print the inside of the card first, and then you can flip it over and run the outside with your image on it. And then that image doesn't get like I said, pulled through the printer twice. But for the demo, it's always easier to do the outside first. There okay. We go. Okay, so our card was printed. All you have to do is, so the image came out like this on top. So the inscription was at the back, the black the blank was at the front. All I'm gonna do is pick it up and set it back in the printer. So this would have been the blank side for the second run. So it comes out, just pick it up. Don't flip it over, just pick it up and set it back in the printer. So if this were the card that were picked out, all we do is pick it up, don't flip it over, set it right back in the printer for the second side. So we'll go back to Photoshop. And again, here's the inside that I made. And all we have to do is go back to print. And as long as I haven't changed printers or done anything else, it will save all of the settings that I had selected. So again, the P700, the artist card profile, I'm just going to go back and double check that it has it on the sheet feeder and not roll paper, which is correct. So we can save that again and click print. And that is, so those instructions that we just went over in Photoshop, it works the same for a, a vertical or a horizontal card, and it works the same for any size of card. There's no 
change in how you reload the paper in the printer or anything else like that. They all are oriented the same direction. So would you print the inside of all the cards first and then print the outside afterwards? Yeah, that's kind of the, the best way, especially if you have an, an image, um, unlike this, if you have an image that has a lot of dark tones that may be a little more prone to scratching, um, it, it definitely gives you a little bit of insurance if you're printing the outside second so that it's only passing through the printer just the one time as it gets printed. But that's a workflow thing as well. If, if you have plenty of time and you want to print the outside first and then let it sit for maybe a half an hour before you print the inside, that's also just fine. There's no, uh, there's no hard and fast rule one way or the other. All right. How long would you that. off gas? Sorry. Um, oh, how okay. long would you off gas and can you stack the printed forms without causing uh, banding? So you can stack them. I would wait an hour or more before I stack them. Um, the fact of that being that because these are double sided cards and because this is double sided paper, both sides will absorb ink. So if you have a fresh print on here and you stack a bunch of cards right on top, it's possible that that second card may start to absorb a little bit of the ink out of the print if it hasn't finished off gassing it. So I would give it yeah, at least an hour before I stack them. So if you have the space, you can kind of lay out cards as you print them. And then once they've been drying for a bit, then you can stack them up. And I would wait overnight before you fold them and put them in an envelope. Because again, if you have a lot of dark text on the inside, when you fold that card together and put it in an envelope, if it's still a little wet, as we'll call it, even though it's instant dry, um, that can kind of ghost that text to the inside of the card if you fold it too soon. And would you recommend using the varnish, the desert varnish on the card? That can be kind of overkill unless it's a card that you think people are going to want to maybe display for the rest of the year or something they're going to put on their wall for quite a while. But if it's just a kind of a seasonal card that's maybe going to stay up throughout the holidays and then get tucked away or whatever else in January, there's no need to spray the cards. That's, that would be a, an extra conservation step just if you think it's going to be used for a long time. All right, so now here's our card as it came out. We'll fold it. And you can see that front, back, and if we open it, there it is. Our inscription is in the correct spot. So there's our square holiday card printed out of Photoshop. <laughs> um, David, I see you're asking, I have problems with the paper not feeding correctly. It either sticks two sheets together or will feed straight through and call the printer out. Printing one sheet at a time works. Uh, yeah, that, that can be a problem with some Epson printers. And one of the things you can do to try and correct that is inside the printer, in the center of the sheet feeder is a little rubber feed tire. Um, if you're printing, and this is, this is the same for any printer out there, if you're printing a lot of matte or fine art paper, that feed tire can get uh, paper lint and some of the inkjet coating kind of rubs off on it over time. So if you just take, for instance, a, a microfiber cloth, get a little damp just with water, you can wipe that rubber wheel off and that should help get off some of the paper lint and hopefully help it properly feed sheets. Um, sometimes it is a fact though of just, you set one in there and then you set another one in kind of behind it as that starts to print and, and you just kind of get a workflow of feeding it one or two sheets at a time. And it all depends on what works for your specific situation. Is there only one ICC profile for the artist card, no matter um, the size chosen? Correct. So because the profile is the, the paper and not the size, any of the artist cards use the same profile. Um, Wayne is asking, do you have the ICC profile set in Photoshop and in the printer driver? I noticed a warning in Photoshop to disable the printer color management. Yeah, so on the Mac, the printer color management is automatically disabled. On the PC, generally you have to disable it and we do have that included in the instructions. Um, do you know what the most popular card stock is? Uh, as in size, I, I don't. Mainly it depends on what works for your images and, and your aesthetics. And he's also asking for pricing, which is all on our website. We also have a bunch of resellers for the cards, which is also listed on our website. 
Um, and then I mentioned in the beginning that we're running the 15% off using the code HOLIDAY15 at the end of the, um, when you go to checkout. So you will have that discount too. Um, Nancy's asking if the card stock is pre-scored. Yes, so all of the artist cards come with envelopes and pre-scored. So it's hard to show on camera, but there's a very fine score here down the middle of the card. And then it folds really nicely right, right along that score. And both the standard artist cards and the heavy artist cards both have the same score. And it is scored with the grain. So you should get a nice consistent fold on that card. We have another question. How long will it take to ship these cards? Um, well, that would all, if we have them in stock in the warehouse, only a couple of days, that depends on what reseller you're working with. If you have a, a store in your city that, that stocks our cards, then you know, that's always my recommendation. You can go in and, and pick them up same day or, or next day. But yeah, if you need them in a, in a very specific amount of time, I would double check with your, with your local vendor or I think we're usually shipping orders within a couple of days out of the warehouse. I know our, this is inventory time of year, so it might take an extra day or two, but it we're shipping pretty promptly. Yep. And sorry, I meant holiday 21, not holiday 15. It will also come uh, in an email from Zoom. The code will be in there as well. Are the cards all standard mailing size requiring only one first class stamp? Uh, the rectangular cards are, I believe the post office requires more than one stamp for square cards, but I don't know if there's a size cutoff on that or not. So you'd have to look that up on the postal service website, but for all of the standard, the small, the large, and the entrotelopes, all of those will ship with, or will mail with just one standard first class stamp. Uh, Barry uses Lightroom to print the cards. Any advantage to using Photoshop instead? No, and, and I'll get into a Lightroom demo here in a second. The only advantage to Photoshop is that you can add a lot more text. So Lightroom limits you to one line of text and it's a little more complicated to move around. Whereas Photoshop, you have pretty much unlimited design options when it comes to text. But one of the nice things about Lightroom when you're printing the images is that if you wanna print many images, on the cards, you can set it up so that you can have as many images as you want, click print, and it will print one of those images on, on each of the card blanks you have loaded. So you can print 10 different cards without having to go through a, a print setup for each image. Um, and Rob gave some good advice for when he puts the card back into the printer. He says, when I have printed a card, I cut a plain sheet of paper to size, then print one side. As it comes out of the printer, I draw a big arrow on it, indicating the direction it came out, then I do the same for the other side as I staple the two papers together in the right orientation and refer to this when putting the cards into the printer. So thank you, Rob, that's helpful. Yeah, and that's, that's the big thing that through all these things, whether you're printing cards or book pages or anything else, you know, don't be afraid to take a sheet or two and, and run it through as a test and make some notes to yourself, however that works in your workflow so that you have a kind of a hard key to how this works because next week, next month, or next year, none of us will remember exactly how we needed to flip it over when it came out. But once you, once you have that instruction sheet, it, it'll pop right back into your head. And like you said, you can do it 10 times in a row and then on the 11th time, you could just flip it the wrong way, yeah, <laughs> not thinking think about it. I think it's always good when you have something that fails in a live demo because it just proves that um, we're all human here. And and yes, if you've made the mistake, I've definitely made the mistake too. So hopefully, I can I can save you some mistakes by by doing it all here. Um, what gram is are the various cards? So the standard okay. artist cards are 190 GSM, and the heavy cards are 300 GSM. And the printer, uh, what printer do you think gives the best uh, image quality? You know, photo printers these days, especially since these are matte cards, uh, pigment printers are all extremely competitive in terms of output quality. So my advice on selecting a printer is what, what works best in your space. Um, if you're gonna use roll paper, then on a desktop machine, then you're gonna to have to go with an Epson because Canon right now doesn't support roll paper on their desktop printers. 
Whereas if you're going to be printing on a lot of fine art media, um, the, for me, the Canon rear fine art loading is a lot more straightforward than the Epson uh, front feed where you have to pull down the tray every time. So if you, if you have the opportunity, if you have a, a camera store kind of close by where you can go check out some of these different printers, then you can make a decision based on, you know, size and workflow and features and all that sort of thing. Or if you belong to a camera club or have a friend with a printer or anything else like that, you know, check in with, with the resources around you and see what people like and what they recommend. Um, so you can have the best advice on, on a printer that's going to go the distance for you. But in terms of output and gamut and all those other things, the, the Canons and the Epsons are, are extremely comparable, you know, very, very little difference between the two. All right. So this is the print module. Sorry, I have to keep moving around my zoom toolbar. So in the, um, in the Lightroom template download folder, there will be a PDF instructions on how to add the templates to Lightroom. So I've already done that here. And now you can see in the template browser where we have the normal Lightroom templates, there's another section here called Moab cards. And that has the entrotelopes, horizontal and vertical. And then it has the large, small and square artist card templates. So with Lightroom, you can do it two different ways. You can either crop your image before you go to print, or you can let Lightroom uh, crop and zoom to fit in the, in the card template. So whatever works for you is a completely acceptable workflow. So here we have uh, three images that I've selected and I'm printing on the square cards and I'd wanna do a vertical for this image. So I can click on that over here on the right side. And again, that automatically brings up the template. It has the margins built in. It has my image in the middle. So as long as this looks good to me, it's all set to print. And then again, over here in my print settings, I have to set if I want the print resolution um, for a, a card of this size, 300 should be plenty. The 240 that Lightroom defaults to is also just fine. And then down here, I need to select my profile. Now, if this is the first time you're printing cards in Lightroom, you're going to have to add the profile to Lightroom. So once you've downloaded it and installed it in the appropriate operating system folder, it's not going to automatically show up on this list. You're going to have to go down here to other, which will show you all of the profiles installed on your computer, thankfully in alphabetical order. And then you'll scroll down to Moab and you'll see here the artist cards and it will be unchecked. So you'll have to check the box and click okay. And then that newly installed profile will be here in your list. So I have to go to page setup, select my printer. And again, this is the same workflow as we did in Photoshop. If you haven't printed on the cards yet, You'll need to go to manage custom sizes and you'll need to add that custom size card. And these dimensions are all listed in the instructions. So I'm printing on the square cards, which I've already put in here, five and a quarter by 10 and a half. And then again, set your margins to zero, select okay. And okay again. And then if we go down here to print settings, Again, I'm using a P700. And then I want to go to printer settings. Again, double check that your page setup is set to sheet. And then ultra premium presentation paper mat is our media setting. Click save. And then we can click print. And that will be printing here shortly. And then again, if you have an image like number two down here, that is a very different size from our card, I can select it. And then I can simply drag it around in that bo bounding box that Lightroom gives me so that I can center it where I want it and it's all ready to print. And as we discussed, if you do that for all three of your images, you can simply select, hit shift, select all three, click print, and then you'll print three different cards with the three different images, which is really convenient. And there's no harm in printing your um, 
front and back from Lightroom. And then if you have a kind of a fancier interior, you could print that out of Photoshop. The other thing you can do is if you make a, a template in Photoshop for, for instance, half the inside of the card, then you could export that text into a saved document, import it into Lightroom, and then use the print module in Lightroom to print the inside of the card from, a, from an image that you created in Photoshop. And Peter's asking, can you edit in Photoshop from Lightroom to just get around the print limitation on the card in Lightroom? Uh, yes, I, I, think I, I think I know what that question is, but what I was, I, I think he's kind of asking the same thing that I just was thinking about. So you can import, let me go back. So here is a, a layout that we made in Photoshop. So added some snowflakes and, um, and some text and then exported that and imported it here into Lightroom. And it's, it's sized for a, a taller vertical card. But again, this is something where you could export it out of Photoshop, import it into Lightroom, and then use this for the inside of your cards. And here is our horizontal card. Printed out of Lightroom. So you do have a few questions. Um, yeah. Is there any way to add text to Lightroom without using Photoshop? Yeah, so Lightroom allows you one line of text. Um, it's like I said, it's fairly limited, but you can put in a line of text. But beyond that, uh, no, you can't go and do other things. But the other option is you could you could go something like uh, Word or Apple's Pages, make a document that's the same size as that card panel, uh, design it the way you want it, save it as a PDF, or um, I don't remember if Word gives you the option for a JPEG or not. So you can save it as a PDF or a JPEG and then import that into Lightroom and print from a, from a fixed image. That's generally the best way to do text in the Lightroom is to import a finished design from somewhere else. And then does importing the text reduce the quality of the text? No, as long as you have um, you know, a, a standard file or a 300 pixel inch file. But no, the only time that, that you might run into problems if you, is if you somehow made a, a very small PNG or something else or a, or a bitmap. Um, that wouldn't do well. But as long as you save your text design as a, as a PDF or a JPEG, uh, Lightroom will import it just fine. In Lightroom, what do you suggest as sharpening? Um, I always leave it as, I think the default is low. Again, when you're printing something at, at this size or, or even up to the, the five by seven cards, the image is, is so small that, um, a big variation in the amount of sharpening is going to make a very little difference in the print. Print sharpening becomes much more important as you get into a, a larger format print. Uh, Nancy's asking if you print a text document in pages and export it as a PDF, can you then print it on the inside or outside? Or is there another step you must do first for Lightroom to acknowledge the PDF text? No, any, anything that you've exported as, a, you know, as, a, as an image or a single page PDF out of a, a different program, you should be able to import that straight into Lightroom and Lightroom will treat it just as though it's a, it's a photograph. Um, the main thing you wanna keep in mind is when you're designing that, that text layout is to make sure that your document in the other program is the same size as either uh, one panel of the card or if you want it to go top to bottom, you, know, you would do both panels of the card and then and if you're doing both panels of the card and you're printing out a Lightroom, you're going to have to alter the template a little bit to get it to allow both. But most people are just going to be doing one panel on the card. So for the square cards, for instance, you'd make a five by five document, do your text design, add anything else you want to add, export that. And when you import it into Lightroom, Lightroom will respect it as a five by five document. And then you can easily print it out of that print module. Why not print straight from pages if you use... Uh, the text. You could, I like to print the cards from just one 
application in case that the way it orients the image changes between the two. So if you're always printing out of Photoshop or you're always printing out of Lightroom, you know that it's always going to send, you know, the top of the document first and the bottom second or, or whatever that orientation is going to be, because it can be tricky if you're trying to print a card, flip it over and then run the inside from another program, it might orient the document a different direction when it prints it. So if you are comfortable taking the time to do some testing on that and make yourself some notes, there's no problem at all to doing that. I just, I like using one program, especially because I know how it's set up. I've got my custom paper sizes in there already, all that sort of thing. Keeping it consistent is the best way to avoid errors. Could you also use a HP printer to print these cards? Certainly, all, the, the, the templates and the setup uh, are printer independent. So whether it's a, a desktop all-in-one or a, you know, a, a photo printer or anything else like that, they'll all work the same way because the printer is just putting the ink on the paper. So as long as it accepts you know, the, the sheet size, which any desktop printer should do, then the, the setup and the steps should all be the same. And then the one thing that we haven't gotten to yet is borderless printing. So like we talked about on some of the new Canon printers, you can just print borderless natively. I'll do a quick run through in Photoshop for that. So here we are back in Photoshop. And if I go back to print, and again, this is, this is going to be determined by the card size. So I'm going to cancel out of here because I'm in the square cards, which I cannot print borderless. And I need to go to the entrotelopes, which is right here. So here's my entrotelope template. So I'm going to go to print. And again, this natively works on the Canon Pro 200 or the Canon Pro 300. They've added in the firmware. So I'm going to select the Pro 300. I'm going to select my artist card profile. And if I go to print settings, then I'm going to go up into the standard page setup. And here I have 7 by 10, which is my sheet size because it's a five by seven card and I can select seven by 10 borderless. And then under quality and media, matte photo paper. And then click save. And because it's a Canon printer, it's gonna give you a little message that says the selected paper size does not have wide margins. You can just ignore that and click okay. And now, because I'm still using the template, it has the white margins. But if I were setting this up for print, I could run my image all the way out to the edge and I would get a borderless print. Now, the other way that you can do borderless on, on some apps and desktop printers is to do a custom page setup that's a little different from what we've talked about. And I, I apologize if this uh, sounds confusing. Again, it is in the instructions, so you can refer to it there. But the Epson printers, the borderless is limited by the width. So I think it's uh, 7, 10, 11, and 13 are the default borderless widths. So if I wanted to print this borderless on, for instance, the P700 here, I would go to print. And select the P700. Again, select my color profile. And now when I go to print settings, I'm going to break the cardinal rule of making a custom paper size. And I have one down here called Moab card seven by 10 borderless. So what that means is Again, like I said, breaking the cardinal rule, you're going to put in the width as the 
larger dimension, which you would normally never do because to get that borderless print in the Epson, you're actually gonna load the paper sideways, which is why it can be really kind of uh, confusing the first time you do it. So for borderless cards on the Epson desktop printers, you're gonna make a custom paper size that is opposite of what you'd normally do and select okay. <clears throat> and then when I go to printer settings, I will have the option of sheet borderless auto expand. And then we still have presentation that and I'll click save there. And then you'll see, you'll have to change the orientation because again, it's opposite of what you would normally do. And then just like with the Canon, because I'm using the template, it doesn't show as borderless here, but if you had placed an image in out to the edge, you would get a borderless print. So because this is kind of a strange workaround for the Epson printers, I absolutely recommend giving it a couple of tests, making sure that you have everything worked out. Um, if you have borderless auto expand turned on, it may try to extend the image a little bit beyond the fold line because it's gonna to try to scale everything up just a little bit for the borderless. So you might have a little trial and error there, but that does allow you to get borderless cards on your uh, Epson desktop printer. Whereas the Canon, the 200 and the 300 have that option built in for the seven by 10 cards. Lawrence is asking how the Entrada loop compares to the LaSalle Photomat 7x10 scored paper. Yeah, so the LaSalle Photomat is a smooth finish uh, alpha cellulose paper, whereas the Entrada is a cotton paper. So they have a, they have a different look and feel, and that's going to be kind of what, what appeals to you the most. But like I said, all the card blanks are made from the Entrada stock, so they will all be the same paper no matter what size you're selecting. Uh, will the borderless trick work on the 3800? I haven't tried it, but uh, give it a try. You won't um, you know, damage anything by trying it. And, and in the print settings there, you'll either see that it gives you the sheet borderless option or it doesn't, and that's how you know. Got it. Um, so Steven's at saying that he notices the paper link that I provided, which was to the Moab artist cards seems different from what you were using, Evan. Was that the, that was the Entrada Loop cards? It, yes, yeah. so if you're looking for those specific seven by 10 cards, those are still branded as Entrada Lopes and not the Moab Artist cards, even though it's the same paper. The, the Artist cards used to be um, with a different distributor, but we took that over in-house. So now we have kind of two brand, two branded boxes of what is essentially the same thing. The only difference is the size. So that can be a little confusing. And then uh, Pete is asking how the color profile was loaded into Lightroom. So I'll go back to that again. So once you've downloaded and installed the profile from our website, and if you're on Windows, you've either installed it or if you're on the Mac, you've put it in the, in the profiles folder in the library, then you have to add that profile into Lightroom. And again, you only have to do it once when, you, when you've installed the profile and then Lightroom will, will keep it in the list. So in Lightroom, in the print module, scroll down to color management and you'll see a short list here that, that's definitely different from what I have installed. But if you've just installed a profile and it's not here on the list, you go down to the bottom, you select other. Again, this will pull up every installed profile that you have on your computer. You'll probably have a lot fewer profiles than I do. Uh, we have quite a few printers here in the office. So I'm gonna scroll down because these are in order. I'm gonna go to Moab. And I think my two artist card profiles I've already selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a, just pick a different paper here. We'll do the, um, we'll do the Entrada Rag Natural for the P700. So I'm gonna check that box, which means I wanna add it to the list. Click okay, and then here in my list will be Moab and Trotter Reg Natural P700. And then once you've done that, these profiles will be here in this list. As I, as I work through Lightroom, they'll, they'll stay there. They won't come and go. So once you've done that step, that's all you have to do. And uh, I, I'm not at this point going to demonstrate another size card, but all the setup is the same. All the print settings are the same. And um, nothing changes, just the, the size you would put into the custom paper setup, 
And all of those sizes are listed in the PDF instructions and how to make that custom paper size for both PC and Mac. So you should be all set to go there. Again, if you have any questions for either one of us, you can feel free to reply to the Zoom email or you can email me directly. It's evan at legionpaper.com and happy to take your questions and, and help you through uh, printing cards or any other printing questions that you have. Yes, and as usual, we always say, let us know if there's other webinars that you want to hear. So let us know in the email, Evan or Paige at legionpaper.com, and we will try to put those into the into the list. So thanks everyone for joining, and thanks Evan for your time. Absolutely, thanks everybody for coming. Let us know if you have any questions, and uh, happy holidays. Enjoy your enjoy your card printing. Mm -hmm.